Oh, Strange Darling is a trip of a movie. I think I'm still recovering from it. But let's jump in. A relentless predator tracks an injured woman through the Oregon wilderness. The woman does her best to outsmart her attacker, but with each tense moment, she grows weaker and less able. He's a man on a mission, and it's only a matter of time before he captures his prey. So this is going to be spoiler free, even with the images that I'm going to put in, because this is a film and a story you want to know if it's good or not, but you shouldn't know any sort of specifics when it comes to the plot execution. The movie stars Willa Fitzgerald, Kyle Gallner, Barbara Hershey, and Ed Begley Jr. And it takes place in modern day Oregon. And as the vague synopsis said, we watch a massive chase take place. Now, the story is told in six chapters, plus an epilogue. And like Pulp Fiction and some of those other similar stories, this one is told out of sequence. Now, at first, I wasn't sure if that was going to be a good gimmick, but it actually makes the film. I think if this did play out in sequence, it wouldn't have nearly the same impact. Now, we mainly see Willa Fitzgerald and Kyle Gulner. They talk, have some very intimate moments, and share some intense scenes. Now, I love the energy that the two bring to the story. They're not overly demonstrative in every scene. I mean, in fact, a lot of the time, they're very subdued and chill when even having conversations and interacting. But the power dynamic between them, it is electric, and it continued to suck me in minute after minute. This is pitched as based on a true story. I'm unsure if it actually is based in truth or if what was shown is just complete fiction. Either way, though, the narrative builds a captivating string of events. And even though this does take place in modern day, the movie was shot on film, and the combination of graininess and shot selections, it really messed with my head because the visual aesthetic felt way more something like it just came out of the mid-70s. Now, the colors are bold, but they're not overly vibrant, except for the reds. I mean, those are typically very vivid. The boldness, though, of the colors, it's present, but not garish, thanks to just some desaturation that comes about thanks to the lighting choices. And all of these make for both a beautiful and transfixing sight. And sort of cinematography gives this film a little timelessness. I mean, yeah, there are modern amenities that we see, but there's also enough retro elements that are incorporated just organically that the movie doesn't feel like it's pigeonholed in a certain area. And that longevity, I think, is going to help it feel current, even when it isn't. Now, I love the intensity that both actors brought to their characters. Kyle Gallner is very quiet, almost understated, but that doesn't reduce the ferocity of his performance. The way he embodies the character is both unnerving and terrifying, creating some very intense emotional reactions and opinions for him. The look that he has in his eyes at parts showcases absolute determination and an unstoppable drive for success. And while he can be frantic at times, there's also this patience that he employs that makes his character all the more unsettling. And then we've got Willa Fitzgerald. I mean, she is an excellent counterpart to Gullner. Fitzgerald showcases a level of emotion that is just palpable but believable. She crafts her character to be endearing and sympathetic, somebody that we can be drawn to, but are also wildly intrigued by. And I love the way that she and Gallner communicated, creating this unrushed cadence, making conversations feel organic rather than scripted. Now, Ed Bigley Jr. and Barbara Hershey, they don't have large roles in this, but they are scene stealers when they're present. There's this moment that showcases some food being prepared. I literally said out loud, good God, because just of what was being piled on a plate. I mean, I think I got the diabetes just from the imagery. But aside from that moment, their characterizations are strange, but in a charming sort of way. And that's exactly what's needed for their scenes. They provide a bit of less intention while also being unsettlingly odd. And the story as a whole is a mystery that plays out. And even though it is told out of sequence, this provides the most intrigue and complexity. And like I said before, if this was presented chronologically, it'd be a fine story, but it wouldn't retain anywhere near the same amount of emotional heft or attachment as it does. And the film never dragged for me. From the very opening sequence, there's fervored chaos, just creating an undefined urgency. We're thrust into a situation with very little information, immediately setting the tone of uncertainty and stress that's going to run through the entire movie. And this is a quick 96 minutes, but it doesn't skimp on character depth and story intrigue. And it's the vague opening that helps to make this so great. We hit the ground running mid-story, so there's maximum excitement and stress, but not the full grasp of everything that's occurring. Now, probably the biggest drawback to the story is one that plagues many movies of this sort, and that's with rewatchability. Once you experience the movie as a whole, the surprises and the mystique is certainly going to be lessened. But I think just like with movies such as Seven or The Usual Suspects, if the story's strong, knowing the outcome, it doesn't hurt the repeated enjoyment. 
Now, if you're disturbed by violence, there are some portions within this that are a bit graphic. I mean, we're not talking slasher level here, but the camera does capture some gnarly sequences that I thought were satisfyingly dark. Now, not many movies have a haunting effect on me, and this one didn't stick with me because of violence or action, but because the writing and the execution smartly drew me in. Between quiet and provocative conversations to a storytelling device that uses disjointed sequencing, Strange Darling left an imprint on my mind, staying with me for days after. Now, the out-of-order presentation, it's not unique, but it's incredibly effective in building a narrative that'll keep you on the edge of your seat with anticipation. It's a twisted story mixed with seemingly straightforward characters caught in a tale that becomes more harrowing the more it progresses. There's no sex or nudity, a bunch of profanity, and then a lot of very brutal violence. I give Strange Darling five out of five couches. And this one was a huge surprise. I can't wait to see it again. So what's a movie that surprised you with how much you enjoyed it? Let me know what did it for you in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.